Okay, stream health is good. 3000k bit. And my gloves are like on. Okay. No dropped frames. That's nice. Ah, oh, Mr. Taylor, good morning. I should say it's almost good afternoon. Uh, and Mr. Parker, I thought you'd be working on your phone still. Was that uh, 5v1 or was it 5v7 error? Uh, where is my... Am I magnetic pads? I'm out of magnetic pads. I need to get a magnetic pad. Okay, uh, TCRS and Greg, magnetic pad. Uh, yeah, this is a uh, anyone who's been doing the repairs for a short while will encounter this classic iPhone 5 type failure. Yeah, the, yeah, it's out of focus because I've turned off auto focus. But anyway, battery expands by the looks of it, pops out the screen, sometimes causes damage to the screen like that. This does, however, look like the person just dropped it as well. And I've just come to realize that my hand is going to be in the way with a fair bit of this. And what have they done to the pentalobes here? Someone's ground them out. Lovely. I fell off, Deadwood's life. UPS screwed me too, scope delayed until tomorrow now. Uh, I don't know what their deal is. I don't know what their deal is. Uh, we've got a real bit of fun here. Come on, out you come. Yeah. Someone's been at this before, and by the feel of it, they didn't have a pentalobe screw driver. So they've just, they've gone out with whatever they can. And yeah, that's fine. There we go. That looks like I may have got enough grip on that. Come on, there we go. I'm gonna have to replace those outright. It's a battery. Sorry I don't have any microscope stuff for you guys, but uh all in good time. Right now I just need to Focus on getting the jobs done that I had to for the microscope. Yep, there we go. It's a nice puffed up battery. Yeah, yeah. This one's interesting. Uh, normally they've got a lot more air in them, like fluffiness. But this one's quite solid, so it's puffed up in a different way to the usual. This has definitely been worked on before. No, oh, yeah, and I can see. I recognize um, this little mark here. This is the person from down the road who's no longer down the road. And the universe has an interesting way of pulling up coincidences. Um, on, I think it was Saturday afternoon, I got a call from someone saying their computer's not working anymore and they just shifted shop and they need to, you know, they need it because they uh, were opening shop on Monday after the move. And it turns out that they're opening shop in the place where the store that um, the other phone store was. So that was pretty interesting. Or amusing, I should say. Come on. Let's go. It was a weird Windows problem too, and I hadn't properly solved it. But it came up with, uh, it was Windows 7. Ah, that's classic. And <clears throat> I had a bad pool error, um, error OX19. Wasn't actually truly able to solve it using the usual techniques, so I rolled it back. I had to go back over a year in the uh, update, uh, system uh, restore points 
which naturally causes a whole bunch of other issues, but anyway, it's still an ongoing problem, what can I do? A world tech fix. Uh, audio a bit low again. Uh, let me see. Uh, I'm trying to remember how I fixed that up last time. Yeah, it looks like it's reset itself. Come on. Oh. Oh, come on, the MacBook video. System preferences. Sound. Is this any better? No. How about that? Is that better? Ah, oh, Mr. Chris Long. Thanks for meeting you here. Yeah, well, the sound's going to get really ugly now. Actually, no, I think I'll use my specialized heat gun for this task. Oh, come on. Everything's still in a bit of a disarray with the new microscope and everything like that. Just have to work at it bit by bit. Ah, that should be just enough to get the battery to explode. Because if it ain't exploding, you're not doing it right. Ah, this is a bugger. Come on. These are not normally that hard to get out. I want to be careful where I'm... Um... There we go. Well, that's weird. This was manufactured in um, last year. January last year. So I don't know what went wrong with that one. Explains why it popped up different to what I'm used to because it's not even an original battery. Let's get all this junk out. There was no pull tab. It's an iPhone 5, not a 5C or a 5S. There's no pull tabs. And the pull tab that was there, that just snapped right off. I've noticed a lot of iPhone 4 OS's are bad for that. Something, something goes on with the plastic that those pull tabs are made out of. I know they've got perforations on them for ensuring you don't overstress it when you pull, but uh, something makes them go weaker. Yeah, we've got a corner problem here. Again, it's going to need the G-Tool. Where the hell is my G-Tool? Uh. Yeah, it's certainly not OEM. Yeah. No. Okay. That's some pretty nasty damage on this. That's well out of truth. Alright, here we go. I'm going to do it backwards for some reason this morning. I'm not trying to put it in upside down, I'm just trying to get a profile. Okay, that should be good enough. Ah, Chris. A 
Come to Paul Daniels Magician stream and here you are. Oh, jeez, the old Paul Daniels Magician thing. You know, I I missed out on getting the pauldaniels.com domain by a couple of weeks thanks to that guy. And he's dead now and I bet you I'll never get that domain. Not that I really care. No one really... Domain names these days aren't as important as what they used to be. What matters now is where you are on Google. I mean, as it is, most people are on Facebook or something. Yeah, no one really types in domain names directly much anymore. Oh, great. You guys going off about the healthcare crap. Oh, Ben, you all. No, just kidding. Feel free to chat away. Nothing very interesting with these jobs, but I gotta say they are money for me. It's easy money. It's low stress money Like I've got a iPhone 6s TriStar I've got to replace and I've got my own iPhone 6s. It was a water damage one that I was lucky didn't really do any critical damage at least not a not any acute critical damage so I went in and I thought, alright, cool, I'll do my practice run on this thing, and, well, nah. Whoever replaced this before lost the... Oh, wow, well, they've left a thing here. What have they got? This... I don't recognise any of the dates here. Nothing. I don't know where the hell this has been. Anyway, so, I'm trying to replace my 6S TriStar. And naturally, for those of you who know the 6S TriStar, I went in there and tried pulling that TriStar chip out. By the way, the TriStar chip was just fine. I'm merely replacing it for the sake of getting the practice. So at least I would know if I screw up the TriStar, well, then it's not going to be working anymore, so I know that I've done wrong. All right. So I'm not dealing with any other unknowns. Yeah, let's see, put my little marks on it. So that I know if someone's trying to jip me. Cool. Uh, I need to pop this chat window out. Because I can't follow you guys. Pop out. Pop out. Pop out wherever you are. Na, 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 na. Uh, oh, hi Austin. Yes, very, very happy I've got that microscope. Uh, I've already done a couple of commercial jobs for it, as in paid jobs. One was a, a MacBook Pro U8900 issue. Um, the customer should get that back today and deliver that. And hopefully it all works. The big problem with the U8900 issue is that it's intermittent. And when I received the machine here, it was behaving perfectly fine. So I repaired, or did the re, uh, resoldering of the U8900, tested it for several days, it seemed good, sent it back, but that's no guarantee. And my metal shield is running off the edge there. That's great, that's just great. So either uh, the screen assembly is crooked. Yeah, that ain't right. What's going on there? Well, someone's bent it. This thing's giving me grief already. Data dots. That's the stuff. <laughs> okay, I don't know if the Huh. Is that been meant to be there or are they just been... I don't think that is. You can find another five, iPhone 5 shield. Uh, let's see. There's a... There's a kick. 
in the corner there, and I can't remember if that's standard or not. And yes, the kick is standard. All right. Which means something's out of alignment here. Which means I'm going to have to force something back into alignment. Slide it up from the bottom. Slide it up from the bottom and they'll work. Come on, screwdriver. Do your job. Do your magnetic screwdriver. Some days my arms shake, my hands shake a little bit too much for my liking. I gotta say, that was an interesting thing I found to the microscope. I thought that, I was worried rather, that given the nervousness in my arms and hands, uh, whether that's just due to elevated uh, adrenaline or whatever, I didn't really see a great deal of good prospects doing micro solder or nano soldering or whatever you want to call it. But surprisingly, when you see, when you're working through the microscope, something happens in your brain hand connection and everything comes back under control. That's really crazy. It's like when I'm just doing like this now, I don't have sufficient uh, feedback on my motor control or something. And so my hands just jump around a little bit. But as soon as I can see them under the microscope, it's all good. Uh, that doesn't have enough tack on it. I'm going to help that. This is pretty typical for a lot of these phones that I'm dealing with that come in. They've been through the repairs a few times and power shops haven't, um, you know, they let some things go a bit long or a bit loose or whatever. And so there's a lot of kind of uh, maintenance cleanup type stuff that you end up doing with each job, even though it's only supposed to be just a screen replacement or just a battery replacement. Now, I don't mind doing the maintenance cleanups and whatnot, as long as the person isn't being a dick to me or anything. I really hate it when people come up to me, they don't know me from a bar of soap or anything, and they're like, mate, mate, can you do me a favor, mate? It's like, oh, fuck off already, you know? It's like, stop. First thing you come along and you're trying to angle in for a deal or something like that. So, nope, nope, nope. Got yourself some double penalty points there, buddy. The other really good one is if they throw their cigarette butts in my yard as they approach the house. It's like, you're out. Or better yet, if I have seen that there are um, animal haters or something like that on the discussion groups. And I'm like, right, I would like to deny you my services, but instead I'm going to be the mature adult here. I'm going to do the work for you, but I'm going to charge you through the roof for it because you're a jerk. Around here, there's a lot of them. I know, it's not the correct thing to do or whatever. I'll probably get fired by myself for expressing unpopular opinions. Um, I don't know why, but I'm feeling a bit upside down today. Normally I do this this way. I haven't really had a lot of sleep. Um, the last couple of nights we used up 
trying to sort out that Windows blue screen of death, eight, uh, 19 code, bad pool job. Because I wanted to help those people get up and running with their business. Because uh, yeah, there's, there's a little bit of an issue with, oh, look at that. I need to, I need to uh, redact my prior statement, or retract my prior statement rather, not redact. It seems they did have the plastic spacer in there. Thank God for that. In you go. In you go. Oh. Yeah, so after this, I've got a Samsung S4 that has a collapsed power button. Interestingly, it's collapsed in a way that it's pretty much pressing on 90% of the time. Normally it's the other way around, I found. Normally, yeah, they just constantly, you can't press them down anymore, you can't get your phone to turn on or whatever. Like the iPhone 5 power switch button. God, I hate that, that problem. Oh, you gonna get in? Get in. Get in. Good. Uh, so, Mark Sepp, my brother, he's a jeweler, 36 years, he's like a kid, he's a jeweler, he's like a kid for new toy. Yeah, it's great. I've, I've kind of um, created a bit of misery here for myself. I've taken a lot of my old iPhones that I wasn't able to recover because of, you know, wood, whatever. And I'd pull them apart and have a look at them, but then instead of closing up the job, putting them all back together and uh, you know, keeping it all nice and neat, I'd go find another one, pull that apart. So now on the side of the bench here, I've got just six, seven phones in various states of disrepair. I'm uh, really bad for that. I think of all my business issues, my um, lack of cleaning up after myself after I've finished a job, or not properly finishing a job, is perhaps the most detrimental, particularly for my workspace cleanliness. Five G custom will be back for a U two replacement. Uh, if they come back for the TriStar, from what I've gathered from what everyone else has said, I will be telling them no. <laughs> uh, Queensland bogans, yeah. Well, I think just bogans in general, yeah. Senja four seventy five, Wayne fifty seven bus. That's a good idea. I hummed it. So right now I've got to save up again for the new camera. But that should happen pretty quick. Except the jobs are coming in. With the combination of me being able to do them with the microscope and the fact that the other stores closed down. Uh, things should be things are looking nice. It is amazing how well, I shouldn't say amazing. It is impressive how sometimes in life you can struggle for many years and then it just takes the right amount of money. It doesn't even have to be a lot of money, but it just takes getting one little thing in place at the right sort of time or a little bit quicker than what you can do it yourself. And it can have a cascading or it can catalyze a great deal of other good changes in your life. So I've been sort of running around in survival mode for the last sort of five years or so after um, the whole breakdown thing. And it's only been just the last couple of months now that everything's coming together really nicely and hopefully we'll continue to do so. I mean, there's obviously always going to be issues in life, that's just life. It's never a smooth transition in life. It's always just nothing, 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 bang, everything. Come on, up you come. There you go. Tack down, tack down. Uh, oops, someone retracted a message. I keep getting from my brother, dude. Come and have a look. <laughs> 
Diamonds I find are interesting in this, I mean, from a technical perspective, I find them very interesting because of their extreme hardness, their amazing conductivity, yeah, thermal conductivity and things like that. But aesthetically, yeah, they don't really get me going. I'd rather something like a nice amethyst, uh, sapphire or topaz, yeah, something with a bit of character. Even some nice agates or opals, although not big biggest fan of opal. Yep, there goes a bogan. Um, because you can't you can't facet opals, well you can, but they lose their luster very quickly due to the fact that it's a very soft uh, stone. Yeah. And certainly when you cut a diamond very nicely and you get a good brilliance out of it. That's great. But other than that, it's like, yeah, yeah. I think it's more of being, the world's being sold a bit of a con job on that. Uh, anyway. It's more like meeting the right person at the right moment, I would say. Well, pen of, yeah, that can definitely be a big thing too. And there can be the small things, the bubble fly effect on cause and chain reactions. Like, I would not have actually ever encountered Lewis Rossman if it wasn't for one of my customers bringing me a, um, I think it was an A1278 or something like that, the, an old MacBook Pro, uh, MacBook, and I was, he said, look, just just give it a whirl, you yeah. know, it's, it's no good to me in its current state, so pop it over and see if you can find any fault with it, and I was like, well, I've never worked on Macs before, and yeah, I had worked on PC laptops, so it was pretty standard fare for me. So yeah, I went looking around on Google, and um, somehow or another ended up on one of Lewis's videos, older videos, particularly the one-wire circuit type stuff. And there, from then, I was sort of like, okay, great, I got this sorted out. And, uh, and then the open board view thing came along. And it was just at that time that uh, Chloridite had released Open Board View. And then I went looking for the Linux version, and I saw that Pernov and Pathmuff and Matt Sturgeon, Surgeon Sturgeon, had just managed to create the Linux build. And I suppose you could say from there the rest is history. And is battery going to clip in? There are good bogans, there are bad bogans. Well, yeah, I suppose, um, t to me the term bogan probably infers bad, but I guess it's a matter of how pedantic one is. If they're not terrorizing me, okay, fine, they can be good bogans. <laughs> no. I like gold. Uh, funnily enough, I like platinum myself, or even pla uh, platinum, yeah, as opposed to gold. But uh, and yet, I prefer coloured stones rather than pure white stones or clear stones. Uh, yeah, let's see if this. Most bogans are good customers. They break shit and they're not tight. <laughs> yeah, you got a point about that. They're uh, well tech fix. Yeah, very good point. There's something that. I lament to my wife about, and um, she laments to me, is that you've got all these so-called bogans, and um, yeah, they're, they're very flush with cash. Yeah, flashing his cash again, boss. So, um, on that perspective, yeah. Uh, see. But the bad bogans are really terrible, definitely, yeah, okay. So, thank you, yeah, that's a good clarification. I love this community, all you guys are sensible, I have helping heart. Well, we try, don't always succeed. Yes, the internet is working, what have we got? Zero drop frames, so it's definitely got to be something like a CVC issue with my upstream provider. Because it's not the connection. The connection, if I check the router, stays steady at um, the full sync rate it should. 
Linux version was almost only me. That's why the build system is so complicated and incomprehensible. Ah, right. What um, what work did PathMath do? Because I don't see him around much. He doesn't make a lot in the way of comments, but was he more the file type conversions or something? But, um, but yeah, I, I remember going in, looking at the GitHub site, and then I saw the Linux version. I thought, yes, Linux. And, and then I started using it. I was like, well, this isn't uh, good enough with the rendering of the various parts. It started out because I wanted 45 degree angle parts to be rendered properly and it went out of control from there. Uh, Chris, no worries, I'll catch up with you later with my usual inane drivel. Uh, oh, and obviously this phone is working and that screw is for lack of a better term, screwed. I'm just gonna have to get a new. Come on, out you go. Don't make me struggle with you after I've done all this work. Chris, I'm gonna have to. Oh, you're probably gone now, but I'm gonna have to look at getting a better new pair of snips and cutters so I can cut away that iPhone 6S shield. I don't wanna do another pull out from the underside type trick. That wasn't fun. <laughs> yeah, I just noticed my cat. I've got a cat in here. <laughs> Normally I don't let them in, but this one um, sneaks in a lot. Pathmad did some tiny cleanups of the original code based off. Oh, right. Right, found the FZ key. Yes, right, so the form format. Yeah, how you guys got to that, I don't know, but yeah, thank goodness you did. I mean, sure, we had the BRD format, sort of, or you had the BRD format, sort of, which is the one that Lewis cared about. So, um, I'll tell you, I am going to work out that PCB file format one day, I hope, even if I've got to, like, go and get employed by that company to get into their servers to find that file format. I don't think I'll go that far. Uh, let's see. I need to get a... Uh, I need a pantalobe screw for this. No pantalobe screws in there. I can't find a pen lobe that I want anywhere, so let me have a... Uh, I'll find it later. It, normally I have them stocked up. Uh, let's see if this thing charges properly.
boom, what are we at? 63%, 730 million, 76, that's pretty good. I'm all happy with that. You suggested the annotations thing, the universal package format, right, yeah. Yeah, I think the trouble with the universal package format is it's going to be like that um, XFC thing where basically within now going to have N plus one file formats to support, so... I do like the idea that I like, I'm trying to work on um, creating a meta information database. Uh, someone made a suggestion the other day, it would be nice if the board view software would uh, retain where you're zoomed in or uh, whatever. Or you can actually set it so like when you get your preferred starting point, you can hit a key and that stores that starting point so that uh, say you've got a board that always comes up inverted and turned the wrong way. You can set it how you want, press the key and it puts in the database, that's your preferred startup orientation. <clears throat> Excuse me, are there banned words? I don't know. I don't believe I've added anything. <laughs> oh. Uh, well, anyway, so this is big, so I'm happy with that. It doesn't need any more charging. That's good. Fantastic. It's interesting. I've got the I've got the assistive touch on there for some reason. I don't know why, because it's all working. Oh well, such is. Link not working on my tablet, which, Wayne, you're talking about someone else, I'm presuming? So. Uh, I think you'll find that uh, YouTube does eliminate URLs and things like that just by default. It's not even something that I do. It's just something that YouTube sometimes does. Funnily enough, I found on, even if it's as a moderator on other channels, uh, some of them won't let me put web page URLs in it, just pfft, tells me edit and retry, edit and retry, but others do. Anyway. Oh, anyway. Alright, well, I'm going to head off. Um, I might do another quick stream when I get this um, Galaxy S4 that I need to change the buttons on. But in the meantime, I'm going to scoot, get this one paid for. So fortunately out here, I've got to say, you get good money with screen repairs still. Um, but this one here, I usually try to make around about um, well, at least 80 on a screen job. So, and I'm buying refurb screens, so they're not cheap. Like I can buy a... I can buy an aftermarket one of these for I think around about 25 or something like that, maybe 20. Uh, that's domestically in Australia. But instead I'll pay about 39 for a refurb one. The only trouble I'm finding with things like the five is the refurbs are starting to, I'm starting to get batches of pink ones. And the pink usually means that they've been refurbed too many times. And so I'm kind of tossing up whether I should start picking up the high end aftermarket ones. It's tough to say because I find with the high-end aftermarket ones, the screen sometimes can be good enough, but the touch has almost always got issues. So, anyway, I have, like I've, well this one here is a good example. This is um, a 6S Plus that I got for $50 and it had a smash screen on it. It still worked, but I wanted to replace it. And this is the cheap aftermarket. The display quality is good enough. There we go, playing best fiends. That's just bloody classic. Yeah, the display quality is good enough. There's no problems there. But the touch, I have to push really hard on this a lot of the time. Also, I mess up things. Yeah, it loses the touch continuity. Uh, like every now and then, there's a bit of a dead spot down here and these are fairly typical of what I'm seeing on most aftermarket screens so the screen can be fine but the touch is always an issue most OEM 5G screens have pink hues uh, it's not because of well the thing is when you 
when they come back a few times after they've been refurbed, they start developing. There is a pink overall hue, but there also starts to you get a bit of a perimeter encroachment of excess pink, or is it from the inside? You'll see what I've. I've always been told that it's from the refurbishing process, um, the heating and the cycling or whatever. So maybe it's not, but I would never saw original OEM screens, new ones with that. It just seems to be something that gets worse over the over the time. So maybe maybe I'm wrong, but um, as far as I understood it, it was the reworking process that tends to make the display slowly over time develop that uh, color hue. Pink in the middle, yeah, that's it, thanks. Uh, some of them are okay. You know, it's just something barely, like if you pull up, uh, let's see, what is it? Usually the way I test is I go into the settings. This one's good, but the others I get that. It starts out sometimes as a thin pink block in the middle and then just others are really bad. And the really bad ones I send back. Because the supplier that I've got, they themselves will say, like if you're sending them screens to be refurbished, they themselves say they reject the ones that are going too pink. Yet, funnily enough, they'll sell them back to me. They are pink before refurbished. So what's causing the pinkness? Because I don't see them... Uh, you know, you know, what is causing the pinkness? Because I don't see them pink as original screens. And it seems to be getting worse as time goes on. So it's OCA on OCA and uh, optical clear adhesive. Don't they normally just get that all off properly with the scraping, or is it just something that they can never truly get off? Is it the porosity of the LCD panel and the OCA sort of seeps in? Yeah. Oh, I'm genuinely asking, so if anyone knows, send me a message. Because I, I have seen some brand new ones, and funny enough, it's not usually pink that I see, but they almost have like a greenish effect around the outside, particularly as they're getting older, uh, or a bit of a darkening perhaps. So I'd love to know where the pink's coming from. Genuine question. Seeps through the side. Okay. If it seeps through the side... Okay, so what's causing them to go... It's the LCD aging. Okay. Is the aging accelerated through the process of uh, stripping them? Not because, you know, if they go through a heat, uh, if they're going into the vacuum autoclaves and things like that. So basically you're saying it's more a case of um, just linear age issue as opposed to the reworking process. And the problem, where, the, where I've got a bit of a data disconnect here in terms of the research, trying to find out the cause here, is that I've had a fair number of really old iPhone 5s, and they all have, I haven't encountered one yet, but then again, that's anecdotal. I haven't encountered one yet where it's gone pink just through age on its own, if it's an original screen. I will have them where they have that progressive darkening on the um, on the very edges, just for whatever reason. So I don't know. The backlights are LED, yeah. Okay, so it's like permanent hue change. Could it be possible then that the assembly process? Um, you know, because obviously they're put into the vacuum autoclave, at least unless they're using some really cheap, nasty stuff. But could it be that because of that process, um, you know, the pressure that the screen, the fusing goes under, 
isn't um, say it's too much or whatever as you say could that be then over time what's causing them so I guess you could sort of say while it's not explicitly the fact that they've been refurb that's causing it to go pink it could be indirectly through the fact that the pressure uh, hasn't been done right or something like that uh, CCFLs can take a hike I hate those things I've got I think I've done a couple replacements with LCD panels back in the days when like it was six, seven hundred dollars for a 15 inch LCD panel. And the thing that terrified me the most with those replacements is they had the extremely fine uh, metal tray caps that were in them. And those things are just like one great big knife blade. And you know, I took it out and next thing I'm not bleeding everywhere because they just, I didn't even feel it. Uh, there I was worried about the mercury in the tubes, which isn't really a lot anyway, as long as you clean it up and don't sniff it too much. But it ended up being the thin reflective metal caps that sliced me up instead. 5G screens were shit quality, shit quality, okay. Yeah, it was no fun though when they ran out and all of a sudden the world prices went ridiculous. That was a pain in the butt. Uh, yeah, with the dying CCFLs, they tend to go that like pinkish brown colour, they do, yeah. But it's a different issue in this case. As World Tech was saying, it's uh, something about the actual LCD cells themselves. Alright, right, I'm out of here. I've got to go get some other things done. I may be back when I do the S4 button replacement. It's going to be a little bit... Um, a little bit difficult to see because we don't yet have the camera, but I need to do these jobs so I can go and get the camera. Hopefully by the round about the end of the month, it's going to be the Sony um, 1080p one, but for the short term I'll be using the USB connection which will give me 720p, which is going to be fine anyway. LCDs can get discoloured from being overexposed to the sun too. Ooh, okay. Hey Lisa, sorry Lisa, I'm just closing up too, but thanks for popping in anyway. <laughs> Uh, okay, I'm out of here. Thank you all. I uh, may see you back um, if I get my delivery. It could be an hour or two. We'll see how we go. Until then, take care. See you next time.